Hey, Elijah. Hey, Haroon. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hello. How are you? We're doing well. Super glad to have you guys here on the show today because, man, you all kicked debts behind. <laughs> and you guys destroyed a mountain of debt. And I know everybody cannot wait to hear all about how you were able to do such an amazing thing. But before we do that, can you just take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody and let them know what you're all about? Yeah, um, I'm her own. Um, I don't know what else you want us to say. Um, uh, I work in mental health. Um, currently, um, that's my career field and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm Elijah. I'm originally from Nigeria, West Africa. I always plug that in there because <laughs> I'm proud. Uh, so I've been in the country some 18 years now. Uh, my, my career is as an implementation consultant. So that's what I do right now. Um, as an implementation consultant, we're based here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Awesome. So now at one point, you guys were in a bunch of debt. You're debt free today, but that's not how this story started. It started with a mountain of debt. So help us understand how much debt you were in, the type of debt that it was, and how long it took you to get it out of your life. Right. Yeah, this was not always the case. So we're we're new to this side of the world of being debt free. Um, so I actually have the numbers in front of me here. So originally, the total debt that we started with was one hundred and fifty four thousand dollars um, and nine hundred and forty seven dollars. So one thousand fifty four, a little over one hundred fifty four thousand is what our total debt was. And uh, about 90 percent or so of that was student loans. So the exact number, if you're curious, um, the student loans total was um, 135,400. Uh, that's two undergrad and one uh, overachiever. She had the grad. <laughs> I had just the undergrad and I was done. And then uh, for car loans, we had a total of 3,600 combined. For credit cards, we had uh, 9,947. Did I miss one there? So our car loans were 9600 9, 9600 I don't know what I said, but $9,600 for <laughs> right. a car so, and how long did it take for you guys to start to finish this process of getting out of debt? Took us two years and 10 months. Whoa, that's it? That's it. <laughs> Man. <So long. laughs> and uh, so when we started, like you said, our total debt was close to 155000 When we finished, we obviously had to pay interest as well. <laughs> so uh, we ended up paying off 161842 dollars and 29 cents that's important <laughs> that's important because i think that sometimes we focus on what uh sally may or naviant or ford mortar company or bank of america tells us you know what our balance is but as we're going through the journey we are also paying interest so you guys are absolutely right you guys paid off over a hundred and sixty thousand dollars when you include the interest which is which is crazy especially when you did like in two years man that is insane so yeah. let's rewind once again because you mentioned student loan debt you mentioned cars you mentioned credit cards which is all a part of what most people have in their life anyway it's not abnormal it's not out of the ordinary but for you all something happened where you all had the idea like maybe this is not how we should be living our life we need to do something different we need to get out of debt Help us understand what made you guys even think that it was possible to become debt free. Yeah. So actually, um, when we were when we were going through the before we went through the debt free journey, I was in grad school, like Elijah mentioned, and it was my last semester. And so, you know, during your last semester of school, you have to go through your exit interviews. And I was preparing for that at the same time I was in my last semester of classes. And I have to be honest, I was super overwhelmed. We had just gotten engaged and we had moved in together and we were planning our wedding at that point. And um, I just kept looking at my exit interview papers and thinking, is there a mistake? Did I? Is this someone else's loans? <laughs> because, you know, like you said, when you're taking out the loans, you're not thinking about the interest. And so I immediately uh, started 
putting stuff down on spreadsheets. I'm a spreadsheet person. <laughs> um, and I started realizing, whoa, I've accumulated this much student loans. And at that time, we I was I had just turned 26. And um, I already had my own debt-free plan. I wanted to be debt-free in five years. And Elijah had his own debt-free plan as well, which happened to be a five-year plan. And so he was doing his own thing. He was almost done paying off his car at that time. And I was doing my own thing. Uh, I was paying a little uh, more uh, than the minimum payments for my student loans. And when I saw that, I just immediately, I just started researching. And what I actually did is I went on Google and said, <laughs> I put down, or Google or YouTube, how do you pay student loans off fast? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> The first thing that came up was all these people that were following Dave Ramsey, which I had no idea who Dave Ramsey was at that time. And so I was binge watching Dave Ramsey videos <laughs> um, anytime that I had an opportunity to. And I also uh, ran into this blog of this um, young lady who was in a similar situation as I was. She had completed grad school, had moved to D.C., and realized she had accumulated over $90,000 in debt of student loans. And um, then she decided to start paying off her debt and she took extreme measures like, you know, moved out of her one bedroom apartment in DC and, you know, lived, you know, by her uh, with a roommate um, and really downsized her life. And at the same time, her boyfriend was able to save up um, about $75,000 in three years. And so I was. I, you know, I brought that up to Elijah, you know, saying, well, you know, these people are doing it and they live in D.C. We live in Minnesota and St. Paul. You know, the life um, expenses are not as high as living in D.C. Um, and so I brought all my spreadsheets and Dave Ramsey <laughs> <laughs> videos. And he was just not, you know, he did not go for it at that time. <laughs> so, you know, about five months of trying to convince him and showing him a bunch of... Um, Dave Ramsey videos and introducing him to all of that, um, then he got on board okay. to the, the journey. So from the time that we realized that we needed to be on this journey, it took about five months for us to get on the same page. So I'm curious, Elijah, if you had an idea that you did want to get out of debt, what was the hesitation when Haron was bringing you this information that she was finding out about people getting out of debt? What was it that didn't kind of synergize with you at first? It was the, the extreme measures okay. that she wanted to go. So like she said, we both had a plan to be debt free. But when she presented it that we could do this in a lot faster period and you know, we could pay this much more towards debt every month. It was the it was the extreme measures of kind of paying it off fast that was kind of intimidating to me and I was not I was not with it. So how Haron did you remain patient? Because I'm sure you were excited. You're seeing these examples of people that are doing what you want to do. And so I'm sure that you came to Elijah with excitement. And at first he was like, nah, I think we're cool. How did you remain? Because there, there's people listening right now who are in the boat where you were, where you want to take extreme measures. You, you, you feel like we can do it faster. But when they present it to their significant other, they're not so enthusiastic. So what was your reaction in, in the interim before Elijah came on board five months later and you guys got on the same page? How did you handle that interim phase? You know, yeah, I, I was really excited and really into the idea. And so for me, what I did was, you know, I'm a big believer in people, especially in any kind of relationship that you're in, creating a shared plan. Uh, and co-creating that plan, whatever it is, either whether it's a plan or a goal. So I wasn't really, um, although I was really excited, enthusiastic, I just kept focusing on just gaining knowledge. So I continued to gain knowledge on my own and I started creating a plan. Even though he wasn't enthusiastic about including his debt, I started um, creating projections of my debt, how I can pay it off faster with my own income. And I just started doing that on my own. And I would always share with him like, oh, guess what I learned today? You know, I learned this and I heard about this couple and that couple. And by, you know, and for me, I started creating habit changes for my own self in, in terms of the spending that I was doing. Um, and at that, at this time, we were living together, but, but our our um, expenses were together but our finances were separate um and um so it was it was a lot easier for for me to do things on my own because i we did have separate finances 
um, and then we just sh shared our expenses. Um, but I really maintained, like, committed to changing my lifestyle um, and changing my habits. And I think that's what inspired him um, to really get on board. And then when we also, when we were planning our wedding and planning on getting married, um, we had to have a sit down conversation, you know, if we're going to get married, how are we going to, uh, deal with finances? Um, I strongly believe that, uh, when you're married, you have to join your finances together. It's not a separate, you know, thing. Um, and so we had to have a realistic conversation about that. If we're going to get married and continue with this relationship, how are we going to start um, becoming, you know, truly a, a partnership in all aspects? So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, Elijah, what was it that finally, you know, kind of broke the ice for you and allowed you to see that all this information and all this uh, strategizing that Haron was doing was actually the best idea. What what brought you over to team get out of debt right now? Right. I think when I finally opened up my mind to actually looking and being open to the idea of paying off our debt aggressively and actually took the time to actually start watching the Dave Ramsey channel and really seeing, you know, how real this can be and how life changing it can be if we went the aggressive route. I think it's what really opened my mind. I actually remember vividly the Friday night that we both watched the Dave Ramsey. Um, it was like a seminar that he was doing, kind of going through the Itch Baby Steps, you know, extensively on YouTube. A very old um, video on YouTube of Dave Ramsey going through the steps. And that night, that Friday night, we went through that video. We watched testimonials on Dave Ramsey's channel, and really, that's when the light bulb went off for me, and I, it just kind of made sense that we should go that route of just paying it off as quickly as we can. You know, we sat down, we calculated the numbers, and I think that's part of what did it as well, is just seeing if we stood the course and paid it off in a slower pace and seeing how much it would incur in interest versus paying it off as quickly as possible. Seeing the numbers difference kind of was a no-brainer for me. Um, so that's kind of what, what triggered it and got me on board finally. Were there like some like online calculators that you all were using? Like how were you calculating the numbers to see like if we pay at this pace, we pay this much at interest versus if we do it this way, we don't pay as much as interest. Like how, how did you come about with those numbers? Um, I created, like I said, I really love spreadsheets. That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, I created all of our projection sheets and actually, what I, did, what I did was I just created an Excel spreadsheet and then added formulas to it based on all the interest uh, of all the loans that I had and then all the loans that he had, and then created a Gantt chart, which is essentially just a projection of if we committed this amount of money per month, we'd get out of, we'd pay off, let's say, our credit cards by November 2015. And then if we committed this amount per month, we'll pay off. So I created that sheet. and. Um, honestly, I didn't use any kind of cal calculators. I used my own knowledge um, in terms of uh, just creating a spreadsheet. There are a lot of calculators out there. You can just go, you know, you can put in the interest rate that you have for a specific amount of loans. Um, if you Google, like, you know, interest rate calculator, you can probably figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just created an Excel spreadsheet, added the formulas in there, and then it kind of showed what we would be paying. And we were tracking, intensively tracking. The five months that I was doing it by myself, I was intensively tracking how much quarterly interest that I had coming in. So that also helped me see how much interest that I was paying for all of my loans. Too. I mean, you were really breaking this thing down to, to a science. science. <laughs> to science. <laughs> I, I was, love it. Yeah, tracking to the penny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so we get to the point to where now both of you are on board with being aggressive and getting out of debt. Talk to us about what you did now that you all were both working together as a team. Give the audience some ideas about some of these extreme measures um, that you guys did in order to allow yourself to become debt free quicker. So when we decided um, to be debt free, it really escalated pretty quickly. So. We had a chat about it that Friday, and we sat down and did all of our numbers. That Monday, we decided to sell his car that he had paid off. <laughs> Mind you, I just paid this car off. Okay, so talk about the philosophy there. So I just paid, so like she mentioned earlier, we both were kind of on our plan of being debt-free. It was gonna take us each about five years to be debt-free. Mm -hmm. So for me, my, my uh, next task was to pay off the car. 
And actually, I was following essentially Dave Ramsey without realizing it. So I was paying by balance, I believe. So the car I was working on, I had just got done. That was going to be my first time ever. Well, that was my first time ever in my life that I had a car that did not have a note on it. Mm-hmm. And so I just paid it off. That Friday night when we sat down and calculated numbers, it just made sense that I had an asset that was sitting there that was paid for. I travel every week for work. You know, we just it was a no-brainer at that point to just sell it, get the cash, and just put it towards our debt because at that point we were gazelle intense and we just we, – it wasn't really an argument. It just made sense to get that cash and get the ball rolling. Mm-hmm. Man, I love that. And, um, I, have, I have a car that's, that I bought brand new and that was halfway paid off, and we realized that my car was – a lot newer than his car that was paid off. So we decided to keep that as one of our cars. We sold his car. We used that helped us um, pay off a couple of things. And then we bought him a car, a thousand dollar car, just in case he needed it. It was his brother's old car that was just sitting around. Um, and he was just, I think, planning on donating it. And we off, you know, we were like, yeah, well, we're willing to buy it for you. He said a thousand dollars. He said, okay, we handed him the cash. We had two cars that were, you know, almost paid off at that point. So, yeah, that's just the, the what we did. At the first extreme measure we took was selling that car and downgrading. Um, and then the next thing we did is with the money we got, we paid. We went straight towards our credit cards. We paid our credit cards off, the majority of our credit cards. And then the $1,000, um, uh, we started our $1,000 emergency fund with the money we had. Luckily, I had savings. Um, too, that I was saving while I was on my own personal debt-free journey and he had savings. We took those savings and we just immediately took it out and paid for, um, paid off our credit cards. And then the next was our car loans, which was basically my car loan that was left. And yeah, we started paying that off. <laughs> so that was it. So within a weekend, we just decided that we were going to um, take those extreme steps. The other thing that we did was at that time, I had uh, I had one job. I decided to get a part-time job um, that I had for a long time. I just decided to work more hours. Um, so for about a year and a half into our debt-free journey, I had two jobs that I was working. Um, like we mentioned, Elijah travels for his work a lot, so it was harder for him to um, do another job. But um, he also DJs on the side, which is his own small business that he has. Um, so yeah, so that's what we did. So we decided we followed Dave Ramsey's plan, you know, increase your your um, income, your income, um, and then a couple months after he decided to get a new job, which increased his salary. I also got a new job, which increased my salary as well. So awesome, uh, awesome. Yeah, well, talk about the car a little bit. Talk in case somebody wants to try and replicate one. How did you go about selling it? Did you do it like uh, Craigslist? Did you take it to a dealership? And then two, you know, you hear about a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar car. Like, did you have any trouble with it? Like, did it break down on you, or, or was it cool? Uh, so the first piece, yeah. So I put it on a Craigslist. That was going to be the most cost effective when it comes to not paying for ads or anything like that. So uh, put it on Craigslist. Um, we got inquiries pretty fast, and we sold it pretty fast. Um, so that's how we how did went you, about. How did you that. figure out its value? Uh, KBB. I went on KBB.com. Um, Kelly's Blue Book figure out what the private um, party value would be to sell a private value. We could have traded it, I guess, for faster, but that also means that I got less cash for it. So it just made sense to sell it to a private uh, buyer. So we just went online, looked at the value, and sold it for pretty much what it was worth. Okay. And talk about your Dave car. How did you, what, did it give you right. any problems? <laughs> My Dave car, I mean, it was a thousand dollar car. And <laughs> I still drive that car too today, actually. Um, but it's all, uh, old old 7 Hyundai Sonata it was my brother's old car it had previous accidents and it behaved like it <laughs> I mean a lot of things are not legal about that car it doesn't have dash <laughs> dashboard lights but anyways I mean it, it broke down it broke down many times but honestly um it was kind of fun it's kind of weird but it was kind of fun just because you felt like you were sacrificing and we technically could have just put money aside to got to get a more expensive car but there was just no need for it. So it behaved like a $1,000 car. It broke down many times. Um, we towed it a few times. But again, because I traveled um, you know, three weeks out of the month sometimes, it was really for the weekends and for the week that I was here at the office um, for work. So um, it definitely behaved like a $1,000 car and mm-hmm. broke down many times. And we just fixed it up. Uh, but it was still worth it because it definitely still cost less than it would to go get a more expensive car. 
I was going to say too, and because I had my car was really in good condition, he would borrow my car and I live so close to work, I could walk or take public transportation. So that helped us out a lot. When there was weeks that he was here working, I would just give up my car and opt to take the train or the bus. Um, so there was a lot of sharing and compromising. Good stuff. Amen. Now you guys hit the cars, then you hit the credit cards, but then like this big monster was waiting for you called student loan debt. Um, was that, I mean, even though you had these wins underneath your belt, the cars, the credit cards, was it, did it feel, did you like gulp when it was time to hit the student loans? And then if that's the case, how did you like find that strength to, to, to keep going forward and go after it? Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was creating my projection sheets, I was so excited because I kept seeing the milestones, but you, it's only on paper. <laughs> so, right. Reality doesn't hit until you start. So what we did was in about six months, we paid off 34000 close to $34,000, $35,000. That included our credit cards, our, our car, and then um, a little bit of our private student loans, which our parents had co-signed under. So when we hit our first six months, we were so excited. We were like, yeah, you know, we could do it. And then, you know, we were just really happy celebrating. And then we like turn around, there was this 120 some thousand dollars left. And mind you, at this time we were still, I mean, we were tracking the interest, but we weren't really tracking as much because we kept looking at the number so it didn't really hit us like how much it was and at the same time we started planning for our wedding so we needed to save you know it was going to be a slower process and so it was oof it was it was unbearable when we started i mean when we saw that huge number i remember just being discouraged so much and what we decided to do is we decided that we were going to break it up in chunks and just focus on smaller numbers we realized that's what helped us a lot and uh, so instead of focusing on this gigantic combined student loan, we decided that we would pay off his student loan first. And that's what we did. It was We looked at it. It was a smaller amount. We had initially started paying off my student loans and realized, you know what, this is getting really overwhelming. So we just switched off. We started paying his student loans. We paid off. His was about $36,000, $37,000. And when we paid that off, again, it kind of gave us another you know, boost and energy and motivation. Like, yeah, we can do it. We're almost halfway there. Um, and so that's what we did. We just kept breaking it in chunks. We knew that 35000 if we could do that in six months, and that kept our motivation going, if we just kept breaking it up in kind of in that $35,000, $40,000 number, um, we would keep motivated. Um, and then what we did is when we had small wins, like the first six months when we paid off our thirty-four, dollars $35,000, we celebrated. You know, we just did mini celebrations. So it wasn't anything big. We went to dinner or we celebrated with friends. Or um, I think when we paid off almost $90,000, we started our YouTube channel. <laughs> so, you know, like we just, just decided to do things that would motivate us in our own journey. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, I mean, like she said, it was definitely intimidating. But I think breaking it down to those small numbers is kind of a good way to not, to not get defeated by the total balance amount. So each time that we would, that we would pay off the line item... Um, you know, because we, I mean, it, Naviant and Great Lakes, they kind of break it down per each loan. So that's what we did when we attacked the big balance. We we're attacking it per loan. Mm -hmm. So seeing those get eliminated, no matter how long it takes, was kind of how we went about it rather than um, focusing too much on the total, total balance, which kind of kept us motivated. Now, I, normally in this part of the show, we ask about obstacles. So I don't want to refer to this as an obstacle, but you guys did get married during this process. And so <laughs> you said that you had to kind of slow down so that you could, you know, save up cash for your wedding while you're also trying to get out of debt. Talk about that dichotomy that was going on during that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we I mean, obviously, we knew coming in that we're going to get married um, in, the, in the middle of the journey. So that was all part of the plan. So we had budgeted, you know, for our wedding. And then as we were paying, once we got to the point where we were ready to start saving for the wedding, we kind of put a pause essentially on our total debt-free uh, journey. So we just continued to pay our minimum to obviously um, stay in good standing with, uh, with the lenders. And then we started um, saving up our, our wedding fund. So that's how we went about it. So we paused on paying the surplus towards the debt, save up the cash for the wedding. Once we were at our balance, then we went, we went back um, to full throttle paying towards the 
the student loan. And I would like to mention too, at this time, what we did was we we had we had originally planned to get married in 2016, and we realized we were you know deep into our debt free journey, and we were really motivated. So we decided to actually push out our wedding a year. Um, to pay the majority of our debt. So we decided to pay the majority of our debt and then get married. Right. And then also it gave us time to uh, take advantage of the tax returns too. So we knew that if we uh, planned it right, that we could also utilize tax our tax returns as our wedding, the, start of, the starting of our wedding savings to motivate us. So that's what we did is we just pushed it out um, a year and then we decided to use um, the tax season. And this was a little bit of a gamble because you never know how much you're getting with taxes. But we knew that we kind of, we had, I do our taxes on TurboTax all the time. So I kind of knew that how much we were at least anticipating to get based on our previous tax returns. So we just did that. Um, and yeah, like Elijah said, the other thing we did is because for I had uh, my student loans under Navient, which lets you pay ahead. It gives you an option to, when you're doing a surplus payment, to push out your payments. So that was also a great thing that, yeah, you will incur a little bit of interest, but it will give you, um, if you make surplus payments, it will give you an option, I want to apply the surplus payment to all my future payments. So there was times when we didn't have to pay minimum payments because we had put so much money towards our loan already that it pushed it out to like 2021 or 2022. Okay. And so we used that to our advantage to uh, reduce our minimum expenses per month as well. Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you worked so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com. Now, once you put your finger on the pause button, you got your wedding taken care of, honeymoon, was it hard to take your finger back off of the pause button and get back into the fight? Mm, no. Not, and we're not just saying that, not at all. Because even when paying, I mean, when uh, budgeting for the wedding, that's every time we'd be doing that, we knew that this was just temporary. So it really, it wasn't like we got comfortable not paying debt again. We couldn't wait to get back to our goal of paying off our debt. That's just the truth is we, I mean, we were, yeah. we were, we were tunnel vision on that debt. We knew it was just a temporary pause. And so, to press play again was not that hard at all. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. went right back at it. As soon as we hit our <laughs> wedding goal, we're right back at paying off debt. Yeah, and we actually treated our wedding as a, like we were paying off debt when we were saving for our wedding. So we saved, we we knew that we were paying about $5,000 surplus towards our debt, give or take, per month. So we just decided we're going to save the, about that much money for our wedding too every month. And so that's what we did. Um, and the other thing is, I mean, like Elijah said, I mean, it was really like we were so excited to be debt free that we contemplated, like, should we just push out the wedding again to 2018? <laughs> so, so we couldn't wait to get back to just our regular debt, you know, debt free journey. <laughs> Everyone thought I was the one delaying this wedding process. Like I had commitment issues and I'm like, listen, this is our idea. I mean, I'm, I came along because you, you know, so I'm like, so we contemplated, we contemplated and, Pushing one more year, we're contemplating just run away somewhere and just go <laughs> do a quick wedding and come back so we can pay off debt. So that's I that's how, how we were. What was the response like from family and friends that you are as you all are going through this, you know, extreme makeover to your finances? Were they cheering you on? Were they questioning you? Like you just mentioned, Elijah, like they were like, so why are you really pushing the wedding back? Huh? Right. What's really going on? So like, what what was the response like from everybody as you were doing this? <laughs> we got mixed. We got mixed. So people did laugh at us, not not to you know, not in now uh, in the bad sense, but you know, people thought it was nuts. You know, we weren't really familiar with the Dave Ramsey movement. 
it's kind of nuts to be paying so much amount of debt toward or amount of money towards debt. So when some people laugh, a lot of support. I mean, overall, it was very supportive. But that also came with a lot of questions of people trying to figure out, well, why are you even doing that? You know, you guys seem like you were doing fine already paying off debt. Why go to such extreme measures? So we had laughter. We had questions. Uh, we definitely had support from friends and family. Uh, once they understood why and where our motivation came from, we definitely had the support, especially when we shared on social media. After that first social media share, um, it was kind of overwhelming. We had a lot of great support. So a, a little bit of, of everything, I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think so. Originally, when uh, before we moved in together and started planning our wedding, my parents were really uh, pushing us there, you know, to get our finances together. Um, and that's one of the things they sat down and talked to us about. You know, before you even plan your wedding, you need to sit down. You're engaged now. You need to really figure out what is the plan. What is the plan for you to to pay off this debt? And at the same time, you know, I was looking for inspirations outside, you know, of my own family. They had actually paid off their house in like 15 or 16 years earlier, and they were pretty much debt free. And, you know, it was just it was such a great motivation and they were extremely supportive. They were they were not really pushing to for us to get married anytime soon. The way they had said it was, you know, you're going to be married forever and divorce is expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, figure this out while you can <laughs> before, you know, you just um, blindly go into something without discussing it or being overly optimistic. You know, I, I, as you probably know, finances are the number one causes of divorce in America. And so they were really, really supportive. And I remember the first, I mean, we talked to them. I talked to my parents, we talked to his family, we stopped, we, we explained that we will not be giving Christmas gifts, we want to take our, our name out of the secret Santa, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, all the gifts that you know we gave were actually the first year, I think we gave them the every dollar <laughs> uh, Dave Ramsey budgeting, <laughs> budgeting tool, <laughs> um, and then I handmade some of like some, you know, like hair products and things like that. And, you know, they really liked that. They were they, they were like, really, you know, I don't know. You guys are professionals. Do you really need to be that extreme? But, you know, this is normal. Like a lot of our friends would say things like that. Uh, but at the same time, they were supportive, too. So okay. now that day came, though, where all of this hard work paid off and you guys woke up one morning and you were able to make your very last that payment for everybody that's wondering what that feels like can you paint that picture for us Oof. well so i guess that's kind of two part well the full the real debt payoff was paying off her last student loan uh for mine we recorded it again on our youtube it felt amazing um but we knew we weren't really there yet but when we really crossed our real finish line i'll let you talk about paying off that very last naviant payment yeah so as elijah said we actually had like two debt free uh, celebrations because he was debt free almost a year before I was and uh, like I said we were focusing on paying up all his loans and student loans first so he was debt free and you know he was you know happy and all that and I was happy for him and then the next one was mine and I honestly you know it was it, it is so freeing it just feels like freedom just I don't know like you could get up and do whatever you wanted not that I was being restricted before it or we were being restricted but there is um, especially with student loans you know there's things you just cannot default on or you can't walk away from you could sell a car you could sell you know any other thing that in, in your house that you bought and then you know you know pay off whatever credit card you want but you can't sell your diploma or your degree you know so I think that was the best feeling is just having the freedom to be able to just do whatever we wanted, um, move if we wanted, tr you know, uh, I don't know, travel, whatever we wanted to do. Um, it just felt really freeing and um, yeah, I don't know. It's just really hard to explain, but I think it was just a huge burden lifted off. That's how I could, I could, ex uh, I could really adequately explain it. It just felt like a huge burden lifted off of our shoulders. And for us, you know, and I, I, I can't imagine what other people feel because when we had our loans, it never felt like a burden. Like it wasn't impacting our life significantly. We don't have kids. You know, we're two professional people. I had two jobs. It never felt like, oh, I'm really struggling to get by. Uh, but still, at the same time, it was like, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't owe anybody money, an explanation. Um, so that, that part of it felt really great. 
So collectively, y'all had four jobs, two regular jobs and two side <laughs> yep. jobs. Side hustle. Yep. <laughs> what type of goals are you all setting for yourself now that you all have done this amazing feat of becoming debt free? Yeah, I would definitely say financial freedom is top on our list, uh, which for us just means only doing what we want to do, no matter you know what that means. Um, just being able to kind of control um, the space that we're in when it comes to working. You know, as we went along with the journey, I think that's one of our biggest why to start with, and it became more real when we got close to the finish line. Just really having financial freedom where we could, we, we would not be restricted to doing something because we had to do it, versus doing it only because we wanted to. So that's kind of the big um, end goal. Uh, but leading up to that, you know, we paused investments like Dave Ramsey recommended. And so getting the chance to go back now and watching uh, a balance go up versus watching the balance go down is something that we're very excited about. Um, again, we're strong believers in Dave Ramsey's um, idea of being givers. Um, so we're big on being able to finally be able to um, be a blessing. You know, it's a family that have sacrificed so much for us to be here. Um, and just, you know, just living the life that we want to live. You know, we want to travel, we want to see the world. Um, we want to just have freedom that is not constrained um, to finances. So that's some of the goals that, that we have for ourselves moving forward. What's a, a life lesson that you learned during this journey to debt freedom that you didn't realize before? You know, I would say um, for me, um, I, I grew up in a home where my mom was really frugal and I, I when I think back at it it's really funny because my parents always used to say you know when you're past 25 26 that's when you really listen to you know what I used to say to you so you know I've always I've always I was raised to be mindful of uh, be intentional and mindful of how I spend my money to really you know rely on cash um, and also just to take care of the things that you have and appreciate them um, and I think as we continued with this journey, it really, I felt okay with minimizing my life. I, I think a lot of people think about it as like, oh, this is so extreme or this is going to, like, you don't need to do that or it's going to create more of a burden. But the more things we let go and the more things we decided to sell off because we didn't need them or we weren't using them, it just felt more freeing and to just intentionally have things in your life that you are utilizing, that you are appreciating and not... Uh, cluttering your life with things or that that includes just buying things you don't need or buying food you don't need um, for whatever um, you know for whatever reason so I think it just made me more mindful about um, what I have in my life that it just also includes the things that I, I put in my life as well and so it's I think for me it's caused me to be a, a lot more minimal in my lifestyle um, in terms of purchasing clothes or shoes or things, items for our house, we have that. If it doesn't break, if it's still good enough, we use it and that's it. Um, I think that was a really great life lesson that you just don't need all these materialistic things that are constantly being advertised to you. Um, Elijah? Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. Um, definitely reduced my, my consumption lifestyle with clothing and things like that. Um, in addition for me, I would say really the the power in us coming together was very um, obvious when we started this journey. You know, that included us then sitting down and deciding that we wanted to combine our finances, which, um, you know, was was a big deal. Um, so sitting down, really going through that process, having to be um, transparent, which wasn't hard for us, but it just it becomes more apparent um, how you have to be on the same page uh, when it comes to being in a marriage. And again, going back to what she said, you know, that's... It's number one cause for divorce in this country is finances. So really that the power of us and coming together was to me was, I mean, it, it just became more apparent that, that we really had that um, between both of us, which was a blessing through this journey. It sounds like communication was super important for you guys because you're maintaining four jobs, one of which requires a lot of travel and you're making payments here and making payments there. How did you guys make sure that the area of communication remained strong as you guys were going through this? Yeah, so we, part of our process was having the budgeting meeting. So we had, I mean, that was just, an, it became very, very apparent how important that is in the, in the process. So every other Saturday we sat down and we do a checkup. Some were longer than others, but we see where we're at. How did we do this month? It was not a finger pointing session 
or make someone feel guilty, but it was just a time for us to communicate and see, you know, what are we doing well? What are we not doing well? What do we need to adjust? So that was the, that was the best platform we had to communicate well. But in between, we know we really got transparent. You know, if she wanted to go get something that was not budgeted for, I will talk about it. And going back to friends and laughing at us, <laughs> it was comical to them to say, oh, you have to ask your husband before you go do this. Or I have to say, dang, that's out of the budget for us. We didn't budget for that. So sorry, I can't go to happy hour today or, you know, things like that. I mean, we really, really became very transparent with all transactions because we knew we had a shared goal and we had to communicate to make sure we're on the same page. So that became a very, very big part of the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for us, uh, we also implemented um, an allowance for us. So I had, when we started, it was a $50 allowance for me every two weeks. He had a $50 allowance, and that's no questions asked. We don't audit that or whatever. He could spend it on whatever he wants. I can spend spend it on whatever I want. But if it was, it was money outside of that, um, then yes, we would ask each other, hey, I, won't, I'm, I think I need this. And then it was also a good way to practice, like, do you really need it? <laughs> it was like a check. Yeah, I think I need this. So it was like, okay, what? why do you need it? And then it would, you know, give us time to um, explain why we need it or why we don't need it. Um, and I think, like you said, yeah, he was traveling. I have a really busy schedule too. Um, and communication was really important for us in terms of um, just, you know, our relationship. I think it made us stronger. The fact that we kept... We didn't have that much time, but we were constantly communicating not only about our financial freedom, but also about decisions that we were making. Um, and we were, we were, it was almost like a coaching, you know, you know, when you're asking someone, do you really need that? And can you explain to me why you need that? It, it kept us open. And then it also really taught us to create new habits together, which increased our communication, which increased, I think, our relationship, it enhanced our relationship in a lot of ways. It brought us closer. And because we were the only ones doing it together and it was a team effort, it wasn't like we had a group of people. We didn't do the Financial Peace University or any other groups or anything else. We didn't have a financial planner. So we really relied on each other as partners in this. And I think that was also another thing that just made us, um, our communication better and brought us closer. Um, A lot of, you know, emailing, email updates (laughs) of spreadsheets. (laughs) Everything. What's so, the response like now from family and friends that were once giving you the side eye like, oh, you got to go ask her to go to happy <laughs> hour. And is this really necessary? So what, what are they saying now? Now that you don't owe anybody anything. Definitely supportive. Uh, a lot of them, you know, we're we're very happy to know that a lot of them have started that journey. Um kind of seeing us go through the process and seeing us be on the other side now. A lot of them are definitely family members. Between both of us, we have some four or five family members, siblings and parents that have now gone on the journey of being debt free. So the support and the excitement for us and being happy for us, knowing that they were there and saw, a lot of them saw kind of what that process looked like. Um, so definitely a lot of happiness and celebration um, with us. Yeah, and I think we also got a lot of, I wish I had started earlier or I wish I had started when you gave me that book or (laughs) when you told me about it my brother started a few months after us but then he had to take a couple breaks in between Um, but he's still going on his journey Um, and then I think you know for me I think what's when we when we were finally done and you know we posted and all that stuff I think a lot of people for me representation matters you know when the whole time we were going through this whole debt free journey and I was looking up YouTube videos. There weren't a lot of people that looked like us. Right. And that's also in, in, in itself isolating. The only couple that we saw were you guys. <laughs> no literally, no we would binge no watch your videos constantly like they can do it. They have kids. They have a family. They have a house. And we would just keep motivating ourselves. And I think, like I said, representation matters. And when you see people doing something that you felt like you feel like your group is is not often represented um, to do or is highlighted. Um, I think that gives you just a a bigger motivation. So we've had a lot of people come to us like, how did you do it? I want to start, you know, you inspired us a lot. Can you really help us? So we've been doing a lot of like helping people over email whenever we have time. We still have an extremely busy schedule um, right now, but as much as we can, we try to help out or share our story. Uh, But the support and the, the, uh, feedback has been overwhelming. Um, just a lot of questions, and 
you know, a couple of after we we were deaf, we a few of my coworkers started the journey as well. Um, so, which is pretty cool to see. I mean, you're just sparking up debt freedom all around you, huh? Tell you, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. It's 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 a good thing to to spark up. I think. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned the book. So, are there some book recommendations that you would give out to people? It doesn't just have to be money books, but are there some books that were encouraging to you as you all were going through this process? Yeah. So before this process, I don't remember the last time I read a book. <laughs> but, you know, I started with uh, Dave Ramsey, uh, Total Money Makeover. I read that cover to cover, like, in a matter of going for a trip for work and back. I was done with it. And then during the journey, I picked up uh, Millionaire Next Door uh, by Jay Stanley. That's one of those books that really changed your mindset with money. You know, it's, it's a long years of study of understanding who millionaires are and how they incur their, their wealth. And it's not what you see on TV. That's one of those books that I highly, highly um, recommend just because it helps you understand money. Uh, between there, I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, another great book to just understanding money and getting excited about really making your money work for you. Um, Richest Man in Babylon. Um, the, the list goes on that I read and I think really helped change my mindset. But I would say probably Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover, and Millionaire Next Door were one of those um, big mind-changing books that helps you have a different mindset with money. You know, I'm not going to lie and say that I read the book. I did a lot of the YouTubing. <laughs> I didn't read one single book throughout this whole thing. The only thing that I read was um, the Dave Ramsey like booklet that was 15 pages and, <laughs> and your <laughs> booklet that you have online. That's it. I just, I'm a visual person. I love to read books outside of <laughs> finances. <laughs> I don't know why, but I did a lot of YouTubing um, and, a, and a lot of um, just uh, looking at uh, uh, like mini um, like budgeting books. So I think Dave Ramsey has, if people don't enjoy uh, reading financial books, which I could could be, I don't know, some kind of, you know, some for some people it's boring. Um, Dave Ramsey has his weekly or is it weekly or daily? Yeah, you know, daily, pretty much every day. Daily every YouTube day uploads. Has content. You all have your YouTube. I mean, there's so many people out there doing a lot um, of free information. So I, I really relied on that. Awesome. Awesome. Now, if there was somebody listening or watching you all and they're like, man, that was so awesome that they were able to become debt free, but they're not so sure that they have what it takes to become debt free. What words of encouragement would you offer to that person? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I the one thing that I hear the most is that, well, you guys have two incomes, you know, you all make this much or whatever the situation is. And I, I always tell people, I think if you have a plan with anything, we have if you have some kind of goal and you write it down and you continuously are tracking and investing your time and really being, you know, being disciplined about it, I think you you can accomplish it. It doesn't matter whether you have two incomes or one income. It's about discipline and not relying on motivation. Um, I learned that through this process. I think I we relied on, I, for me, in a lot of things that I want to change my habit, I always rely on motivation. And motivation is not something that you'll have every day. It will get discouraging. It will get tiring. Um, it's a mental game. So I think if you have discipline and you are dedicated to just changing habits, and on learning habits that you've been, you know, practicing your whole life, 20, 30, 40 years, I think that's what's going to get you through the process. So I think what I would tell people is if you're dedicated to starting, write it down, be transparent. Transparency is the number one thing. You know, if you're if you're sitting there in denial and you're basically fooling yourself into thinking, well, I think I know what my debt is, or I think I know what my numbers are, but you're not actually doing the research and the due diligence. You're, you know, you're fooling yourself. So I think if you write it down, that's the number one step, really write it down, research what debt you have out there. And then second, create a plan. And, you know, it will probably be a lot of trial and error until you figure out what works for you. But if you write a plan, uh, very small, targeted, doable um, goals, um, I think, um, you know, anything is possible. It might you might it might take you longer than it did for us. It might take you five years or seven years or ten years, but you know that day will come that you'll be debt free. I'll agree, hundred percent agree. Uh, I was obsessed with our goal as soon as we as soon as we said let's like, go time, and that's kind of I guess who I am. You know, once we set a goal and we we're both on board, every every flight I work every week, I was reading our goals and seeing our numbers and seeing where we were and seeing. Um, 
um, seeing how much we had left. Um, in addition, I would say really, really figure out what your why, what your, what your why is uh, before you start. Because just saying, I want to pay off my debt, everyone I think desires that, right? But when the going gets tough, I think really having a strong enough why, uh, you'll need to go back to that when, when things get hard. Um, you know, for us, it was just having financial freedom. For you, it could be your kids. Um, it could be, you know, not wanting to be at a job that you don't like. Um, you know, whatever your why is. Really, really focusing on that because the times that things get hard, if you can remind yourself the reason you are on that journey, I mean, kind of focusing on what the other side will look like. And I can tell you after after being here now, um, there's just no feeling like it. There's no feeling like having your own money and getting to see, getting to keep the money that you're earning versus having it go um, to student loans. So um, definitely focus on that why. And like she said, kind of just owning a plan and, and just going with it. Elijah, Haron, we want to salute you guys. You guys set that goal. You guys went to work, and you are now debt-free. And we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules with all your full jobs <laughs> to share this with our audience today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And like she said, we want to thank you for just the work that you do. Uh, keep doing the, the great things you're doing. Really appreciate it.